yeah so a very good evening to one and all and welcome to the session so first of all i'll uh, extend my congratulations to all the students who have taken uh, admissions into imt hyderabad and a warm welcome to our panelists so we have with us mr uh, ankur banerji mr kunal and mr jay shankar so i'll start off with briefly introducing uh, to the panelists and also we have our moderator of the session mr prakash patak so i'll start off with the introductions so mr jay shankar is currently working as regional sales manager breads division in britannia and has 26 years of sales experience mostly in fmcg sector he started his career at one of the distributor point in bangalore and then moved to company payroll at perfetti vanwell a multinational company in 1995 and worked there for 24 years determined to grow in his career he took this as a challenge and moved from frontline sales force to the role of regional sales development which was his last assignment before joining britannia he has worked across the south markets for perfetti and was a key contributor to enhancing the sales and distribution expansion in south he has launched and spearheaded many firsts in the markets for perfetti Currently, he is working for Bread Division in Britannia, servicing South and West regions. And we have with us uh, Mr. Ankur Banerji, who is part of Gen Z recruitment team of Cognizant. Before Cognizant, he has worked in the professional services industry in the past decade. He has been working in the campus recruitment and branding space, focusing on improving the brand value of corporates on campus. He has led teams in hiring from B schools, T schools, law schools. graduate colleges and ca fresher hiring he has also been part of technology transformation projects in the hr domain in his pre mba career he has worked as a software developer in dotted technology in his personal life he is sports enthusiast and is interested in painting cooking and reading ankur has an engineering degree in biotechnology and mba from imt ghaziabad he is based out of bangalore with his family and we have with us kunal mr kunal and uh, he brings along 11 years of experience in early careers recruiting and working with global and indian corporations currently he is associated with bain and company as a senior manager where he anchors the hiring and engagement of early talent in the firm before joining bain he led campus recruitment efforts for gartner mahindra combiva and nagaro born and brought up in assam growing up in different parts of india kunal finished his education from delhi university his past time includes cycling solo traveling food shows and cooking so the moderator of today's session is mr prakash patak and he heads corporate relations at imt hyderabad prior to imt hyderabad he has worked with some of the leading universities and b schools including imt ghaziabad handling their placements and corporate relations He has a professional work experience of 30 years across several domains including technology sales assessment corporate relations and people management the last 13 years of his experience has been in placements and corporate relations during his overall tenure in placements he has placed more than 10 uh, 10000 students and helped them not only get their dream jobs but also carve their careers his success is attributed to not only to the strong connect he has with industry leaders but also to the empathy he has for students and a strong desire that his students succeed in getting placed and excel in corporate life he was successful in placing his students in india middle east southeast asia and other countries so this is a brief about our uh, panelists and the moderator of the day and uh, i am saujanya and i am a part of corporate relations office so let's start the discussion on the topic corporate expectations from management graduates so over to you prakash sir yeah thank you sojanya for the introductions and uh, i think all of you have got by now that uh, ankur is also an alum of imt so we have future students of uh, imt and we have an alum of imt he is studied in imt gazebad and as uh, you know all of you would be seeing the students who are entering imt hyderabad all of you would be seeing that we have a very diverse panel today we have panelists from it represented by mr ankur of cognizant uh, mr ankur of cognizant we have kunal from bain and company and we have uh, jay from 
Britannia. So there is IT company representation, there is a representation from consulting and there is a representation from FMCG. Now, before I start, before I give any overview or something like that, I think today's uh, evening is for the panelists and mostly I would like them to speak. Uh, one thing I would like to ask you guys is, I'll start with a question is, for how many of you placements are important? Uh, please raise your hand. Placement, do you feel, is it important? For how many of you placement is important? So I'm seeing nearly everyone is raising his or her hand. And uh, yeah, so it's correct. So uh, you can lower your hand. Thank you so much. So basically what I was trying to say is what, why I asked you this question is that for each one of you placements is a very, very important aspect of taking admissions in an MBA institute. That's the reason you selected an MBA institute like IMT Hyderabad to do your um, MBA in, PGDM in. And, uh, but between this, uh, I mean, you are taking admissions now and in two years from now, you would be working in a company. So between this is a journey. And between this also is the fact that you would be facing something which is called the placement interview, the placement process, where you will be grilled, where you will be asked questions, where you, you will be uh, uh, going through various assessments by the industry to find out and to evaluate whether you are the right fit for that organization or not. And that is where the point comes is that, what are the expectations of the corporate from the industry? And I'm sure, I mean, when people assess you, when anyone is assessing you, when any of these hiring managers and people like Kunal and Ankur and uh, Jay would assess you, uh, they would be assessing you on the parameters that they feel are required by the corporates. So knowing these parameters, how does it help you? It helps you because it's like leaking the question paper of the exam. So today, if these eminent panelists can tell you what the corporate expects out of a student, you can uh, carve your two year journey with IMT Hyderabad in such a way so that you are able to fulfill those expectations and you are able to deliver and get the right placement that you want. So placements is important for all of you that all of you have uh, agreed. So since placements are important, getting to know what the corporate expects from the uh, students is also very, very important and momentous. So what do they expect? Do they expect good academics? Do they expect good subject knowledge? Do they expect peripheral knowledge? Is it advisable to be a part of clubs and committees? All leading institutes have clubs and committees. So does IMT Hyderabad has. How important it is? We'll try to touch the, these questions and try to seek answers from our panelists today on all of these. And of course, uh, the, uh, the format would be for five minutes each, um, uh, the panelists, uh, each of the panelists will be speaking and uh, followed by some questions that I have in mind so I represent you because uh, when you take admissions and when you finally join your course, I'll be taking care of your placements. And then we'll have question and answer session by the students. Uh, so that's the format. And uh, we'll start, uh, as I said, by a, a talk on the topic, on the day's topic by uh, each of the panelists. So whom should we start with? Uh, Kunal, uh, would you like to volunteer? Sure, sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Firstly, uh, a very warm uh, good evening to all of you. Thank you so very much for making out the time to uh, join this call on a Friday evening at 7.30 p.m. Uh, nevertheless, I think uh, I'm hoping that uh, most of you would uh, make something out of the session and we will try to make it interactive as much as we can. Uh, I think the landscape of... Uh, business and industry is uh, continuously evolving and as a recruiter uh, all of us all of us have a long uh, wish list uh, of the competencies that we look for uh, some of them are very very must have and some of them are good to have uh, 
the objective for all of us today should be to focus and uh, listen to the must haves and probably build on that uh, skill further in the remaining two years of your MBA career. Um, and as I said, there are a plethora of competencies that we talk about uh, during a recruiting process. But uh, if I have to talk uh, two most important uh, uh, competencies uh, in the consulting world, uh, those would be you know, your uh, problem solving ability. Um, and the second would be your uh, networking. Now, what do we look in uh, problem solving ability? Uh, what do we look in communication skills and networking? Uh, probably I would uh, want to deep dive on those a uh, little bit later during the conversation. Uh, but yes, for us, if the person does not have a problem solving uh, mindset, uh, it is very difficult for us to uh, quote someone on those dimensions. So it is extremely critical. And I think communication is given, right? I think it is the it is of paramount importance in every role, not just consulting. Uh, how you communicate, how you articulate, uh, is extremely uh, important for uh, today. So yeah, so I think with this uh, few things, I would uh, pass it on to the remaining panel to pour in their thoughts. Sure, thank you, uh, Kunal. So, uh, yes, you rightly said. I think one thing that you said uh, in the beginning is very, very important for students to understand. Landscape is continuously evolving. Yeah, that's what Kunal you said. And I 100% agree with you. I cannot agree more with you than this because, in fact, it's so evolving that whatever we are talking today may change two years from now when you guys actually join the industry. So uh, that doesn't mean that whatever we are discussing today is irrelevant. But anyway, it will, uh, the, the relevance may change, new things may come up, new technologies may come up and so on. And yes, Kunal, you rightly said that, um, you know, the problem solving mindset and communication. In fact, uh, not only in consulting, but the other panelists would also agree that it is something that um, uh, that is universal to all the uh, industries and to all uh, sectors and so on. Uh, so thank you, Kunal, for uh, your um, brief two cents on it. And I would now like to invite Ankur to uh, I mean, uh, share his thoughts on the topic. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity first uh, to IMT Hyderabad. Um, so it's good to be on a Zoom chat at, in the evening on Friday uh, with all the expectant students to join in for the batch in IMT Hyderabad. Once again, congratulations. Uh, getting into a B school is not a, a small achievement. It's a big achievement. So uh, congratulations once again. Um, so um, like it was mentioned, I work with Cognizant and I take care of the B-School hiring um, along with a few other portfolios uh, in Cognizant. Uh, coming to what we expect when we go to a campus uh, and we hire students. Um, so as you know, Cognizant hires um, both a lot in the technology uh, schools as well, the engineering schools as well. And then we also hire from B schools. What is distinct from those is uh, we are looking for people with an analytical background because the roles that we offer on campus are in like, there are two different roles that we offer on campus. One is a consulting role uh, for the Cognizant consulting practice. And we also offer business analyst roles uh, for the other practices that are there. And both the roles require you to have, uh, like Kunal was mentioning, uh, a person who is good with problem solving, who is good with communication. These are must haves for a uh, role. Uh, and the add-ons would be in our industry if you come with a background of uh, technology, nothing like it. That's not a must have, but, um, and I, I think uh, Kunal will resonate with me right now. Uh, even in consulting, uh, technology is a very good add-on because the scope of analytics and the scope of uh, 
um, data that is there and that is required for uh, IT consulting, any professional services firm for that matter. Um, it is very important that you, and if you're interested in this fields, you should have a knack for data uh, and handling huge data and trying to understand and get meaningful insights from the data. You might have a huge data sheet, but what do you do with the data sheet? That might be something that is important, right? And when we are hiring um, and during your placement process, all of these gets uh, looked on, like uh, whether you are good with data, whether uh, you can make inferences from, uh, from the problems that are given to you during an interview. A lot of times you'll have, uh, case-based in interviews wherein there will be a small case presented to you and in the two years that you will spend in the college you'll have a lot of opportunities to analyze cases so that is very important and that you uh, are good in analyzing a case and presenting it sometimes we are good at analyzing the cases but we are not good at presenting it so presenting is also very important uh, how you communicate what you communicate uh, the way you communicate all of that gets looked at during placements and these are very important things that you should build on in uh, the two years that you have um, along with that um, what i feel as a recruiter is very important uh, and this is again something that the industry has caught up with and is uh, a lot of companies are looking to do uh, looking at uh, this um, is pre-placement offers right so uh, when you're coming into a B school, the expectation is that you have uh, a mindset. I know like uh, I was mentioned that uh, it was mentioned that I think almost 70% of the batch might be freshers, but, uh, and this might be your first job after you pass out. But the expectation is you're not at an engineering level. You are a level above that, right? And you have a professional degree in your kitty. So uh, the expectation grows that way. Um, and added with that, uh, the, the uh, changes that you see in the industry is a lot of companies are now looking at pre-placement offers because uh, a 30 minute interview, 40 minute interview, one hour interview, um, you can get to know a person that much, right? But if you are looking at a person for a two month internship, uh, the person understands the company and the company understands the way of working of the person and then can decide whether uh, the person is a good fit for them uh, later on as a full-time employee. So uh, the other part of it is take your uh, summer placements very seriously. Uh, a lot of companies are looking not only for the two months of internship, they're looking at you uh, in a larger sense. At least we do, we in Cognizant, that's what we do. Uh, we are looking at uh, you at, in a larger picture and whether you can be rehired as full-time employees later on, right? Uh, so that is where, and maybe that's me being selfish because that also saves some cost of hiring. Uh, but that's how the industry looks at you as students. And it's very important how you go about your two years. Um, chalk out a plan, talk to your seniors, understand which industry suits you best uh, understand what is it that you want to do not everybody is made out for a sales job not everybody is made out for an it or a consulting job you need to have specific skill sets for it uh, understand that very early on so that you can uh, channelize your efforts into getting into that industry right and that's how we looked at it when we were uh, in college uh, we had people who were very determined that, yes, I have these skill sets. I will only look at sales jobs. I will not get into an IT job or I'll not get into a consulting job. And then there were people who wanted the uh, opposite. And then there were others who were open to all and they did not know what to do. And invariably, you'll see if you don't know what to do, you will end up uh, in applying for all jobs, but not uh, understanding or creating a CV that will be shortlisted for some of the companies. So that's my two cents on it. Uh, I hope I made some sense and uh, all the best once again for your journey in MD Hyderabad. Yeah, thank you, Ankur. Um, I think uh, uh,
very thought provoking uh, views uh, again i would like to agree on uh, few things uh, uh, too much which is your which is what you said analytical skills is something which is very very important these days and um, you pressed on um, uh, the need of case i mean need of preparation for case based assessments so that is very important I, again as a as a placement head uh, i would like to tell the students that more and more companies are using this assessment process of case based interviews or case based assessments and uh, so when cases are being discussed and taught to you in classes please make sure that you are actively participating in them thinking because case based is all about uh, putting your thoughts together and uh, putting your thinking hat together and so on so that case based assessment is something which is uh, which is happening very dominantly in the uh, place in the uh, campus placement space so you guys if you uh, if you are able to uh, take care of that part and be able to focus on that part during the two years that you spend doing an mba uh, that would be of uh, uh, very high importance to you and uh, just layer it on a little bit on the case study uh, considering it is so so uh, important i think the idea here is to uh, not get the right answer uh, from the uh, case study the idea here is to look at the solutioning how do you uh structure it uh what are the different insights that you are able to bring on the table and uh and then put together your final recommendation uh right so uh so i think that is what we look at then we we do not uh, look at a right or a wrong answer we see how the person is able to structure it very lucidly so that the person is able to understand it and then there will be always a panel who will you know uh take you through the journey they will solve it together uh, with you and make it more exciting and challenging yeah sure thank you kunal for uh, making it more clear so we had two uh, experts one from it one from consulting and i know these industries resonate with each other there is a lot of intersection here but now we have a, let's take a, a different um, Uh, aspect and industry which has different challenges different maybe different ways of assessment maybe looking differently at what they expect from future from their future employees and so on so over to you jay to uh, tell us a bit about your industry and uh, what are the expectations of particularly of the fmcg industry you are an fmcg veteran you have worked for more than 26 years in the fmcg industry and with companies like perfetti and now with britannia um, so uh, uh, please guide the students on what you feel are the aspects because many of the marketing students would like to take uh, would like to choose fmcg as um, in for marketing students that's uh, that's a dream sector to be in uh, so over to you jay yeah yeah <clears throat> a very good evening to everyone and first of all i'd like to uh, Uh, say about mr prakash that he gave us an opportunity for me uh, to speak over uh, for this uh, students a warm welcome to students and uh, coming back to the fmcg sector okay so what i would like to i'll just uh, touch upon the fmcg industry right now how is it okay and after what i'll uh, will touch on the points of the competencies of the student or a person now it will help him to go further in his uh, professional career okay so i will refer some of the points which are mentioned which i have taken down here so basically on speaking on fmcg it is the fourth largest sector in the indian economy so apart from your agriculture manufacture manufacturing and services if you take about uh, fmcg it's the fourth, fourth largest sector and uh, the turnover or the uh, revenue what we generate from the fmcg fmcg sector is close to around and in 4 billion dollars okay so this was uh, only 70 billion dollars a uh, 3 years back so from 70 billion dollars it has moved to and in 4 billion us dollars so which is a huge jump of around 40 to 45% so this itself will show how fast this particular sector is uh, growing especially in the last two years there will be a lot of changes which is happening in the market there will be because of this pandemic and there a lot of uh, options which has been come to the uh, consumer okay so this is about the uh, uh, fmcg but in the fmcg segment itself if we go and see there are three uh, basic uh, segments okay a subset of fmcg the first one will be your uh, household and personal care so this is basically your oral 
your uh, uh, your your care skin care this kind of products wherein it contribute around 50% of the total fmcg uh, sector okay so the next part will be the healthcare which is basically the otc products wherein we are accounts for 31% so in between this two 81% of the uh, products goes into this uh, two segments and the last one is the fnb fnb is basically the food and beverage segment wherein there is a contribution of 19% your fn fnb is basically your beverages staples bakery products chocolates ice creams these are the kind of uh, products which we have in this particular segment okay these are the three broad uh, segments of an fmcg which contributes to total 100% 50 from the health uh, uh, household and personal care okay and 31% for from health care and 19% from fnb industry so going forward so what will be the kind of challenges what we uh, what will be there in, in the indian market if you see okay basically there are some strategies which we can actually uh, uh, implement or develop in the coming uh, years to come okay first thing is that you have to strengthen your rural network so because see today also you can india if you see 65% of the population is a rural uh, rural only okay so your more focus can be on a rural markets wherein there is a scope again to improve and in the today's world there is a lot of disposable income which has been there in the rural market also people are uh, purchasing very high end products in the rural market also so that is the biggest opportunity where we have in the rural markets and also today's world what you have seen in the last two years is that it is the uh, product which is to the consumer directly it's called as a direct to consumer and the direct to consumer channel wherein the customer can uh, uh, book a pr product or book a, any any food or something like that in an in its app and we can get it delivered in at his uh, at his home itself so this is the kind of uh, distribution channel as change from the normal traditional uh, go go to the market uh, strategies so next is the uh, uh, new product launches there can be n number of products which can come into the market which will also help into develop further the uh, fmcg category, category overall so why i am saying is this because see there uh, in the last two years if you see there has been lot of health conscious which has come into the picture for in the mind of the customers they want to have a very healthy product they want to have a very good um, content uh, product so that it doesn't make any side effects on so based on this one for many companies are trying to come out with the health related products so that they will be able to tap the con uh, customer or the consumer very quickly so this is one of the strategies where we can implement and also as i said expansion expansion can be in rural market expansion can be in urban markets or like expansion can be in more number of going to the more number of towns and reaching the uh, farthest of the farthest villages in the uh, country so this will be one kind of expansion which happens strategy and next is about the product or the category expansion so what, when i mean uh, product or category expansion is because you can uh, bring in new product okay or you can begin bring in a all together a new category product so that it excites the customer to go in for that particular product okay after it, if i want to give an example um, and there is a tata subsidiary company which has come in with a soothing uh, uh, mint which is basically a chewy mint okay chewy mint which has not been in the market as of now so that is the first to come so this kind of innovative products will come into the market and this will help to grow the uh, business further okay and coming to the uh, one, one more strategy is analytics so analytics as everyone said about it's very very important in today's world because you need to know uh, how do you analyze the uh, data how to take the action on the data so this kind of thing will help you Uh, to further take action or where you want to in the right place or the uh, or at the right mar markets okay next coming to the growth opportunities in indian fmcg industry so what what will be the growth opportunities so one is sourcing base sourcing base when i mean to say sourcing base is basically today india has developed like anything so the make you know the concept of the government wherein make in india concept wherein people are exporting a lot of product from from the from the from our from our own country okay so this is become a large uh, sourcing hub okay it's become a large sourcing hub for and also cost competitive product development and manufacturing to cater to the other markets of the world so this is can be one of the growth opportunities and a penetration as i said penetration it is penetration to the rural market it can be penetration to the urban market itself okay so major players are focusing on this one so the third uh, one is the online fmcg if i talk about online fmcg today is everyone is uh, uh, adapted to this kind of technology wherein everyone uh, is used to uh, ordering the stock uh, stocks or ordering the uh, foods everything if you see the advertisement in the tv also it's all about online marketing so this has developed in the last two years okay so it is it is going to be boom in the other coming coming years also okay so this contribution with the e-commerce totally it's called an e-commerce uh, business this e-commerce business was basically between 4 3 to 5% uh, earlier but this the go, by going by the way it's emerging okay it will definitely touch around uh, 12 to 13% in the next 2 3 2 3 years 
and also i just i told about innovative products so innovative product is one of the key uh, success for any any company if your product is innovative if it uh, stands out from the other companies if it stands out from other competition uh, products then definitely you will have the extra edge or you will have the cutting edge of getting your product uh, into a, into each and every uh, customer which you have been designed for the customer okay so next is about premium products so premium products is basically the one which you target to a higher end uh, people to a very high group of people wherein it will be available in a very a uh, small uh, niche markets but still is the revenue or the kind of uh, image what will get in those kind of products is very very high okay so this will be your growth opportunities okay so what will be the advantage for our country so advantage for our country in fmcg sector is that one is the growing demand you can see the demand which is growing in all the across the uh, marketplace whether it can be a, a metro city it can be a tier 2 cities or it can be rural markets the demand is equally equally growing okay it's not only that only urban is growing or only rural is growing it's been there for uh, every market every market or every uh, town or village of this uh, country okay and second is higher investment so people are ready to investment uh, invest in this particular uh, sector uh, people are actually bringing in a lot of finance putting a lot of money in developing and uh, to further increase this particular uh, se segment and also attract your opportunities today if you see government has given the steps that 100% fdi is been allowed to uh, be pro to operate in the country okay for a single channel uh, company if it's a multi multi channel then it is a 49% fdi so this opportunity allows for other mnc com uh, companies to come in india and uh, develop their uh, products and grow the segment okay this is what uh, this is what is going to be the Uh, growth sector and the growth opportunities or the strategies for the fmcg companies in the next 3 uh, 4 years okay so having said this about the fmcg sector i would like to say uh, some points upon the as a student or as a person who whom you are going to uh, develop as a professional in your career okay there are some uh, definitely some points which i want to touch upon so one is being that you as a person need to develop the right attitude see for any person to be professional or to be uh, successful in life he has to have the right attitude okay so then afterwards you have to limit your expectations okay and the uh, always there is a saying first impression is the uh, best impression okay and it will last long and at the same time your last impression also will last long so that means in between whatever you want to do in your life in your professional career that is that matters a lot okay so the uh, the way you are come out yourself as an excellent uh, um, marketing person or it can be a sales person or you can go you can go to it team or you can go to a logistic team wherever you go the kind of passion and commitment what you need to have is should be a very very high uh, high uh, this thing so that's how you will be able to build upon your own self and okay that is not all the uh, you need to build a very cordial relationship with everyone okay this will help you to develop your um, image in the uh, society develop your image in the uh, around your surroundings okay you need to be a good listener okay and also a uh, good follower okay so there are so many things wherein you need you can go and follow follow up with uh, other big, big leaders are there what is that they are doing so what is the kind of uh, success they have been able to do so those kind of follow up or those kind of things which will help you to uh, take give that extra energy or extra passion uh, to may, may be successful uh, in your in your career also and also you have to exhibit professionalism so basically see if you want to succeed you should have a very professional mindset okay when you are able to be a professional mindset then you will be able to actually uh, succeed in whichever areas you uh, work for okay so to sum it up if you ask me corporates are looking for both intellect consistency in performance okay across your education and professional uh, background and skills relevant to their business so this is what the most of the corporate ex uh, experts okay so that person should be intellectual intellectual and also he should be consistency in performance because if there is no consistency in performance you will definitely lose it out you will, you will, you, it's a, there is a very good saying that if you are not updated that means you are outdated so it's very simple okay so that's how, that's how today's world of business is there okay so uh, to just sum it up uh, the last line what i would like to say is that we hire people for attitude and train them for skills okay this is what i would like to end up my uh, session here and once again thanks for giving this opportunity for me mr prakash uh, saujanya and uh, rajshekar sir thank you very much so thank you jay <clears throat> i'll start with one of the last thing that you said if you are not updated you are outdated so guys uh, there couldn't be uh, any better statement uh, clearly envisaging the need of the r so you have to be updated you have to be on your toes and thank you mr jay for giving us a a glimpse of the fmcg industry first and then telling us what the uh, competencies are that are being looked in the fmcg sector 
as you said, 40 to 50 percent growth uh, in the last three years is phenomenal. Uh, and then you also enlightened us about rural marketing, which is a very upcoming uh, uh, piece of business uh, in the FMCG sector. And um, yes, you rightly point pointed out that you should be a good listener and uh, you know, a good communicator. So, which I think across the industries it is uh, it is uh, important. So uh, we we will further discuss. Meanwhile, I have an announcement to make. If anyone has a question, please post that on the chat box, and uh, I'll try to pick it up from there. So uh, uh, and I would request the IT team also that if there are any questions, they can uh, direct to my chat box. And uh, so uh, as we discuss, as we move ahead to the discussion. We'll, we'll also start taking questions from the students. Okay, sir. So, uh, so one thing, um, and Kunal, I would like uh, to ask you uh, something which is called uh, you know, learning, unlearning, and relearning. Uh, it's a very common phrase. I mean, we talk of uh, this phrase every now and then. So if you could highlight what what that means and for a student who's a fresher or for someone who has two to three years of work ex and now doing an MBA, how does this learning, unlearning and relearning work, work and uh, how they can uh, kind of uh, implement this and what of course would be the advantage of implementing it for them? Sure, uh, thank you for the question, great question. And we all uh, talk about it very frequently in our day-to-day uh, -day life. I think the learn, um, unlearn, and relearn cycle uh, captivates, uh, you know, more critical uh, thinking skills, uh, inspiring you to um, analyze continually, uh, evaluate, uh, and challenge knowledge to ensure that it is relevant and you stay uh, up to date. Um, it is extremely uh, important and critical for each one of us to unlearn in order to replace uh, our, uh, you know, obsolete skills uh, with new skills. Uh, and all of us need to unlearn, not just in terms of uh, our technology or day-to-day -day work or any skills, but also I think in terms of the uh, behavior. Um, we may not understand uh, everything uh, they say, but you know we pick up bits and pieces from what we learn, uh, which helps us to grow. Uh, whereas unlearning uh, means you know letting go our old habits and uh, ways of thinking. Uh, this happens naturally over time as we mature and gain uh, more. Uh, experience. Uh, on the flip side, uh, I think relearning is uh, similar to unlearning, uh, except that instead of letting go of old habits, we replace them with uh, positive ones. Um, and this habit plays a vital role in one's career advancement when we relearn something new. Uh, we use the same knowledge base, but I think what we do is that we just apply it slightly differently. Uh, for example, if I have to take uh, to, you know, illustrate this further, uh, if you're good at maths before, uh, you might find yourself using different or easier uh, strategies to solve uh, problems, right? Um, and these skills uh, can just enhance your performance and also give you an upper hand in your day-to-day -day, uh, roles in any industry that you work with. These are my uh, two to three cents, which I want to share with this group. Sure. Uh, thank you, Kunal. That was very informative. And a question that I had at the top of my mind, because um, um, I believe my students should be knowing what basically it means. Uh, one another important aspect, I'll, I'll, I'll come to Ankur now. And this question uh, is actually uh, could be addressed by any of the panelists. But um, uh, this is about working in global teams. And um, um, in uh, fact, uh, yeah, Ankur, you want to say something? 
Okay, fine. So, so this is about working in global teams and uh, uh, the uh, cultural diversity which comes in. So, both in uh, uh, predominant in IT and consulting, the kind of roles that uh, Kunal and Ankur you. Uh, uh, you come to our campus for involves the students working in global teams and uh, how could the students and what how could they prepare and what can they do during their MBA so that they are ready and it doesn't come as a culture shock for them or maybe something some attributes that they need to develop to face this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, I mean interaction and uh, continuous uh, interaction with the uh, with the global team members of an organization. So, Ankur, uh, I'll pose this question to I'll you. Pose and I'll later on. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so first thing is, I think um, we are blessed that way because we are in India, and here it's not only about having diversity with maybe the uh, countries outside India. If you look at a team uh, or even a class in a B school, you will have people from all across the country, right? And not all person or not everybody will have the same culture or diversity. So it's very important to start from there. In a B school, especially in a class, you'll have people maybe from Hyderabad, from Delhi, from Calcutta, Bombay, Bangalore, all different places, different cultures, different ways of thinking. So I think that's the main, main part where they start. Also, uh, we don't take certain subjects very seriously in B schools. There is something called a cross-cultural uh, uh, like program or cross-cultural uh, diversity. These are subjects that are taught, and we don't uh, we don't take those seriously. It's good to take those seriously now, since most teams are very. Uh, set globally apart. There are, the ways of working are very different in uh, different countries. Uh, what have, what is good or what is uh, acceptable in India might not be acceptable in a country in Europe or in America. Uh, so all that knowledge is good and it is um, good to have. And uh, for me at least, uh, how I see it is you should uh, respect the person at the other end of the table that's uh, that's more important if that is there uh, others other things will follow that is something you can pick up as you are working um, and at this day and age, day and age it's very important for very small things that matter in india uh, context we have uh, zoom calls or uh, teams calls or whatever uh, software we are using but we don't turn on our videos in a call in a global call when you're there with people from europe from the us they'll always turn on their videos when you're on call right that's a norm so these are things that we should be aware of and these are very small things but these things matter when you're in a global uh, global you know, like global setting the other thing is we take for granted if you're late by a couple of minutes that's okay uh, and that's something we think that uh, you know, the call was supposed to start at uh, 7.30, it's okay to log in at 7.32. But you'll see uh, even if people are late by even two minutes, they'll let you know that I'm delayed by two minutes. And that is something that is very important that we as Indians don't, uh, don't think that's very important. It's okay, two minutes is not much, right? But You'll see that culture change when you go to a uh, 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 call with European clients or a US based client or people working there. They'll be on time, and if they're even late or delayed by a couple of minutes, they'll tell you that I'm delayed by a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, so that's very important aspects. It's very small things, but very important. So that's my take on it, uh, Punal. Uh, if you want to. Yeah, add. so thank you, Ankur. Yeah. Uh, Punal, would you quickly like to add? Uh, we have some some questions from the uh, students also. We'll start taking them up, but uh, that's a very important aspect. So I would like to ask Kunal. Uh, nothing. I think Ankur has uh, summarized it well. I think I just remember one of the anecdotes uh, from one of my colleagues, uh, which I probably want to share this uh, with this group is uh, 
I remember uh, one of my colleagues saying that I think uh, he was, I, I don't remember which uh, geography exactly it was, but he, he was writing an email to one of his clients by addressing uh, Hi Kunal and uh, the person on the other side uh, really uh, took it as an offense because uh, in their geography, they do not address people with Hi, they address people with uh, beer. And uh, that, uh, that, that, that is one of the examples which just struck my mind when Ankur was talking about how do we conduct ourselves uh, in a global setting by uh, citing different examples. Uh, so yes, I think it is extremely critical for all of us to be aware of all the uh, nuances when we are working with uh, different clients. Great. Because so something that you feel is cool might not resonate very well with uh, somebody else. True. So you have to take care of um, the, uh, the local, uh, uh, what you say, sensibilities and so on. So, and you should be knowing it before you, uh, before you are writing a mail or you are conversing with them. So exactly that's true. And, um, and uh, can I add one more point there? Yeah, yeah. It's also important. The Kunal talked about learning and unlearning. It's only also important in a global setting to unlearn your lacks and all those terms that we use in the India context. Nobody uses that. You should move to million uh, or hundred thousand. So those terms should be the ones that you're using because you might say one lakh, but the person at the other end might not even understand what a lakh is, right? So uh, again, very small things, but very important. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I have a paucity of time. I wish this come uh, this uh, conversation could be more than one hour, but we have to. We have a hard stop at eight thirty. And uh, Jay, very quickly, uh, in uh, if you can uh, tell me uh, something about tell our students something about sales versus marketing in FMCG. You know, FMCG jobs, as I said, is, is, an, is an aspiration for many. Uh, what is the importance of sales or doing a sales uh, uh, gig before you actually enter into marketing? Please okay. elaborate on this. Yeah, yeah. so uh, if you uh, ask me about sales and marketing in my experience over the years, okay, so the both should go hand in hand. It's not that you are not there with one and you are there with one. It should go hand in hand. For example, just uh, assume uh, ourselves, we just close one night and try to do the things whatever you are doing normally okay but uh, after some few seconds of what will happen now we'll feel a little discomfort okay we'll feel that somewhat little uh, uncomfortable that feeling will come so that's how the sales and marketing it's like a two i which is both eyes are really important uh, for any uh, product to be successful successful in the industry so as i said for example if there is uh, what, what do you say is required for for a sales person okay he also needs to understand what all marketing is there, at least a slight bit of marketing is there, okay. And also for a marketing person, he should also understand what kind of a sales is there, sales he has to do it, okay. So what, what happens is that, for example, a sales guy, okay, he is the person who actually goes and delivers the final product to the end customer or the end, end consumer. The marketing team here, what they do is that basically they develop the product from an R&D perspective to the end point of the factory gate. The product is all the, uh, is in between the people, like it can be a marketing person, it can be a factory people, production team, or it can be R&D team. Once when it goes out of the gate, okay, it, it's all the responsibility lies on the sales team, okay, to go and deliver it to the last person where, where it is required. So in my experience, both should go hand in hand, okay, and both should have the knowledge of both the domain. It is not that one person will have uh, only one uh, domain knowledge and only about sales and the other person will have only our marketing knowledge. The reason why I'm saying is that if you are able to interact and add the knowledge of both of the things, okay, both the sales uh, skills and the marketing skills, it will help you further to go up the ladder, okay. A person who is having, if you if you see most of the top leaders, okay, they will be actually, they would have worked in both the domains. There are very few people who have been in one domain and uh, emerged as a uh, marketing director or a CEO or something like that. Both would have got an experience in both this particular set of uh, domain in sales and marketing and these people would actually go up the ladder very fast. So in my in my perspective, I think this uh, both this should be learned by each and every uh, student Okay, in, in depth so that they'll be able to improve their own career. It's for their own career. A salesperson can be always a salesperson for year long, but that's not the objective. The objective is that you need to go to the next level. So if you're an executive, 
you need to go to the manager level if a manager you need to go to the uh, regional level so that is the kind of thing which i uh, think about sales and marketing yeah thank you jay so um, thank you for telling us that both of them are very important and knowledge of both is required to move up the career and i have a question from one of the student which is i think addressed to kunal because uh, it says uh, what are the necessary digital skills required for a consultancy role in bain and company yeah so it, i mean the student is trying to ask the necessary digital skills required kunal you are mute sorry if you could just further elaborate a little bit on what do you mean by digital skills i i'm not sure if i have understood the question well Uh, yeah so that's the that's the question by a student so maybe we'll um, we'll ask the student to elaborate on it maybe uh, i think i'm not able to sure but the student in general if i can just tell you what are the uh, skills required for somebody to be successful in consulting and maybe some of my uh, narrative will uh, cover uh, what he wants to probably uh, uh, ask past yeah. kya so i think uh, as i rightly said uh, you know problem solving skills uh, is of paramount importance uh, and it is a must have skills uh, we cannot coach people on aptitude uh, if if they uh, if they do not meet the minimum uh, threshold uh number 2 uh, this is not must have but this is good to have uh functional and technical knowledge uh like ankur mentioned uh if you have some expertise on technology uh it is great similarly uh for us if you are bringing any functional uh knowledge in any of the industries like financial services or let's say consumer product and retail those are good to have uh the third most important uh skills which is probably a subset of what i just said now is uh ability to uh instill uh insights from large uh data sets uh using your skills and you know knowledge effectively uh and uh how do you generate uh robust insights which uh drive actionable uh decisions and recommendations um fourth uh, which is important um is you know working in a team setup uh where you know you are collaborating effectively to create positive uh teaming experience which fosters uh one uh, team attitude and last but not the least uh, again i have previously mentioned is uh, communication uh, i think this is basic hygiene uh, for all the industries if you have this five skill sets i think at least uh, i don't know how far will you go in the career but at least you will be able to uh, you know uh, get an entry into the uh, consulting world sure thank you uh, kunal i think that uh, uh, that best addresses the question of the student i have a question from one of the students uh, ankur i would like you to tell your views and um, this is about um, uh, i mean it's a very commonly asked question so that's why i'm taking it up so both is asking this question that does it make any difference while hiring a fresher and a work ex student so as i said we have in this cohort we have both freshers as well as students with some work ex abnormally 2 2 to 3 years of work ex so uh, uh, so does it make any difference while hiring and uh, of course uh, about relevant experience also if you can highlight uh, something that would be great yeah okay so uh, from a hiring standpoint during hiring obviously it does make a lot of difference because a question asked to a fresher and a question asked to a person with experience would be vastly different uh, a lot of times uh, questions would be around what the person would have done previously before joining an mba college uh, to get an understanding of their skill set uh, while for a fresher we don't have the option to ask those questions right uh, from a standpoint of what happens after you join um, at least from the industry that i come from and the industry i worked earlier also and uh, i'll take that liberty to answer for both consulting and it uh, there is no uh, 
cost uh, cost holiday per se. Uh, the moment you are uh, hired and you are onboarded, you might be put into client projects right away, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter if you are a fresher if, or you are a uh, or you're an experienced person. The only difference is that if you're an experienced person, maybe you can utilize uh, that understanding uh, of how uh, to work in a corporate setup. Uh, that's the only difference. Other than that, um, in the consulting space, in the IT space, uh, you are put in the, uh, into client projects from the word go. And the expectation is you start delivering from the word go. Uh, yes, there would be mentors and uh, people who will uh, be there to handhold you, but the learning would be on the job mostly, and it will not uh, it will not be very different per se. Uh, the only difference, like I said, is during the uh, during the hiring, uh, certain roles might uh, require certain prior work experience. That is when uh, you will see a difference and. You might say, why am I not shortlisted and why is so and so shortlisted? But you will have to go back to the CV and the profile to understand that. Um, so definitely at the time of hiring, yes, but after hiring, not much of a difference. Yeah, so I think that very well answers the question that that, that gives a very clear uh, uh, mandate that while hiring, yes, it does make a difference. But once you are hired, it does not. So um, uh, I have a question from one of the students who is repeatedly asking this question. So I am uh, kind of, um, I want to take this up. And uh, although the question is not clear, uh, he says, uh, please ask the panelists to deliberate on operations as well. What industries needs from them in terms of skills? I think what he's trying to ask is the operations uh, students, uh, the students who take up operations as a specialization, what are the skills that are needed in them? Any specific skills that are needed in students who take up operations as a specialization? So anyone would like to take this, I would make it open to all the panelists. Anyone would like to take it? Yeah, I just want to add uh, on this operations uh, part. See, operations part is basically, uh, I hope the student is meaning about, means about that operations on the logistics part. That's what I feel that he's trying to ask about that. Right? Yes, yes. If it, yeah, if it's a, if it's a logistic part, no, you should be well aware of the um, geography. Okay, you should be well aware of the uh, data data points, uh, supply, the entire supply chain management. So how will he is able to uh, adopt to the situation wherein he will be able to cut post the operations and make the unit eff uh, effective. Okay, so the, that means that he should be understanding the geography uh, so well that with the stocks movement from any place to from a place X to a place uh, Y, so happens in a most effective way. So there are different kind of operations. One can be an uh, exclusive operation, one can be a non-exclusive operations. So it all depends upon his uh, uh, in-depth knowledge in that particular domain. So understands the mechanisms of how it's happening now and what best he can do it to make it a better, better efficient one. So these two things uh, is very much required and also some part of your uh, data analytics skill is very much required here because you will have a lot of data or later a lot of information uh, on, the, on the board. But once when it comes, when, when the information comes, you need to try to analyze the information in such a way that you come out with a very pro, uh, effective way of uh, operating in from whatever it is uh, right now. So that's what I feel that the uh, operations uh, who are going into uh, planning to go into operations should uh, should definitely have. And also the knowledge of what others are doing. So it's very, very important. What kind of uh, operations they are having? What kind of operations the competition is having? How will they are able to manage that one? So is it uh, anything different from us? Is it a very cost effective manner which they are doing? So this kind of stuff they have to analyze and uh, take the market uh, knowledge also of that one. Sure. Thanks, Jay. So I think that answers the student question. And just to sum it up, uh, what as Jay said, that probably your, um, uh, I mean, your you have to you have to be cost efficient. You have to be good in supply chain. You have to be good in data analysis and so on. So these are from an operations perspective. These are the key skills that uh, you need to develop uh, when it comes to corporates. What they are looking for in future uh, future employees. Uh, I think we are pressed for time. We have a lot of good questions, but I but uh, let's address them in some other forum, and uh, we will kind of uh, uh, restrict or try to conclude our discussion from here. 
and I would like to give it back to Sojanya for uh, uh, delivering a vote of thanks and uh, uh, concluding this session from there on. Yeah, so thank you so much, Prakash sir. And I would like to thank all the panelists who have taken out their time uh, out of their busy schedule uh, to uh, have a discussion with us, uh, students. And uh, the insights that we got are really interesting. So whether, uh, uh, you know, the discussion on uh, learning, unlearning and relearning or uh, whether uh, sales versus marketing in FMCG or, uh, you know, let it be uh, about data visualization and data presentation and communication skills. So all the panelists have presented uh, their views and these are uh, very interesting and uh, very insightful for the students. I hope the students will uh, have a great learning uh, ahead uh, in IMT for the coming two years. So thank you for students. Thank you uh, admissions team for organizing this uh, discussion and thank you IT team for your support. So thank you so much and we conclude for this evening. Thank you. Yeah, th thank, thank you, you and uh, all the very best students. Uh, this are the, these are the students who are the leaders in the making. Sure. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Ankur. Thank you, Punal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.